differences between the first accounting cycle and the following cycles. We studied so far the first accounting cycle of a firm. And in our example, it was a shop buying and selling goods without manufacturing transformation. By the way, observe that the goods may be the same physically, those bought and those sold, but there are other differences which do not show. It's not the same thing to have goods in suppliers in foreign countries and goods displayed nicely in a shop down the street from our home. The same comment applies to train tickets, and I will talk about that one day. Anyway, for our firm, it was the first year of its life, and there is one specificity in the first cycle that I shall treat today. Specificity of the first accounting cycle. Well, it's very simple. At the beginning, all the accounts of the ledger are empty. During the first cycle, we posted all the normal transactions in two accounts. Some accounts are called revenue accounts. These are the sales and the charges uh, of the year. And some are capital accounts, assets and liabilities. We begin to be familiar with these. At the end of this first cycle, we made some adjustments. These adjustments were in order to have exactly the charges of the year to produce the sales. These adjustments are made through extra revenue accounts and extra capital accounts. These revenue accounts I, I named with an IS next to them, and these extra capital accounts I named with a BS next to them. For instance, an adjustment for prepayment consists in decreasing a charge via a credit in a revenue account called Adjustment for Prepayment IS, perhaps directly in the charge account, but it is in credit, and recording an extra temporary asset via a debit in a capital account called Adjustment for Prepayment BS. All the revenue account balances form the income statement and all the other accounts balances form the balance sheet, but to which, that's important, we have added the bottom line of the income statement. All these things that I'm explaining, you must already know, it's just a review, and if you are not at ease with them uh, yet, you have to go back to previous lessons we uh, studied together. The opening stock of the first cycle was of course empty. At the end of the cycle, in the IS, we have a computation of the COGS that you should be familiar with, the sales, the opening stocks empty, that is zero, purchases, and the closing stocks in credit, closing stocks IS. And in the balance sheet, we have a closing stock in debit. There again, you have to go back to adjustments for stocks if you are not at ease with that. Now comes the second accounting cycle. All the revenue accounts of the ledger are again empty, sales and charges. But all the capital accounts begin with an initial entry, their balance of the year before. So they are not empty at the beginning of the second cycle. Let's take a look at the stocks. The closing stock, BS, I call BS, but I will forget about that very soon of the year before will become the opening stock IS of the new cycle. In other words, the closing stock BS of the year before will be uh, in the top part of the income statement of the second cycle. Amortization. The yearly amortization account is empty again at the beginning of uh, cycle number two, but the amortization BS begins with a figure to which the amortization of the second cycle will be added. For this reason, the usual name of the accounting amortization balance sheet is cumulated amortization. End of the second cycle. Well, we prepare the trial balance as usual. We make adjustments for the second cycle as usual. 
there will be adjustments in accounts that will go into the uh, IS and uh, at first they are empty at the first at the beginning of the second cycle there will be adjustments uh, the parts of adjustments going into accounts that will end up in the balance sheet but these parts will be added to previous figures then we extract the income statement of the second cycle from the trial balance of the second cycle just the way we did before and then we replace in the trial balance all the revenue accounts by just the bottom line of the income statement, the way we've done before. So in the income statement, we have the usual display with the column debit and the column credit, sales, a figure in credit, opening stock. Now there is a figure here, opening stock. It will no longer be zero, but it will be the closing stock of the year before as they appeared in the balance sheet, that's why it's in debit. Purchases of the cycle, closing stock at the end of the cycle, in credit in the IS, and they will be in debit in the balance sheet. Then other charges of the year in debit, and the bottom line of the year, which can be in debit if it's a loss, or in credit if it is a profit. And we end up with the balance sheet at the end of the second cycle. And its uh, look will be something like this. On the asset side, we have the debit column and credit column. So the same is true for the liability side, debit column and credit column. The usual accounts on the asset side are fixed assets in debit. Some cumulated amortization or sigma amortization in credit that is amortization computed in past cycles as well as the plus the amortization of the current cycle that is just finishing stock that's the closing stock at the end of the second cycle in debit clients in debit bank money at the bank in debit usually and cash in debit and on the liability side the usual uh, form is capital account in credit some figure that doesn't move much sum of past and recent profit and loss, which may be altogether in debit if it's a loss or in credit if it's a gain, a profit. <clears throat> so here, just like for amortization, it is now a cumulated profit and loss. And later on, it's going to be called also sigma retained earnings when we learn a little more about what we do with the profit of the year. Sigma retained earnings or Sigma PNL or Sigma uh, profit, uh, Sigma net result, whatever. But it's a Sigma, it's a sum. Loans in credit, that is costly debt that we owe to various lenders and suppliers in credit, various uh, debt we have to suppliers. We shall learn some more accounts on the asset sides, but minor ones and some more accounts on the liability side, but also minor ones.